in 1994. It's, by the way, if anyone else here have a perfect attendance record. Wow, good man. Anyone else? Yes. Wow, good man. Good man. If we had had the full attendance, we'd have had several more with a perfect attendance record. They tried to seek their seats over here. They lost their seats, yeah, so they Well, I think they like standing. Well, then. But then the door's opening, so it's very annoying. There are two here. Well, there are two here. In any case, uh, I think you all, most of you probably know Sam Dixon. He has been uh, one of the most indefatigable and faithful servants of our cause for many, many decades. And sometimes in the front of the stage and sometimes behind the scenes, he's always worked tirelessly for our people. He's the kind of man, if we had 50, if we had 100 Sam Dixon, we would really have an even stronger movement we might be able to put forward to a much brighter future. Sam uh, has been an attorney most of his career, sometimes practiced, sometimes not. He's written, he's agitated, he's on organizations, and I think his role that most of you have seen him in and has struck you most powerfully is Sam has spoken. And Sam has always been the man who brings our conferences to a close, and so it's with gratitude and friendship to introduce Sam Dixon. Uh -huh. If we had 10 Jared Taylors, he'd have a good man. <laughs> I, I know, you know it, it's easy to be a blabbermouth and talk. There's something else to work and work all the time, year after year. How many, it's been 20 something years now? 20 years of very up. 20 years of the same effort. And, and obviously, we all are huge, our race. We know what we owe him. Our people, we might yet know what they know, we owe to him. But we hope the day will come when our people will know what they owe to Jared Taylor. person and does not accept disagreement very happily. Uh, and I, this, I was, had this person present in my home uh, several years ago, a couple of years ago. He is a great supporter of Barack Obama. And he got into an argument uh, with somebody who takes care of, of my property about Obama and Bush. And he, he, told, he said that Bush was retarded. Now certainly I, I don't have any good things to say about Bush. But he said that, that Obama was brilliant. And since he was rather heated and edgy and uh, important on being rude, perhaps, to the person he was talking to, I came to that person's defense by saying, well, I don't think that Obama is necessarily all that intelligent. Uh, to which he took great exception and said rather heatedly, uh, just look at the way he speaks. <laughs> so, as somebody who is a good speaker, and that's what I'm about, you know, I, I know how little that means. <laughs> I, told him, I told him that there's a very poor correlation between the ability to get up and talk and actual intelligence. <laughs> in my high school, perhaps the smartest kid in my class was a Swedish American who was very shy and introspective, like, like blondes and often are. Uh, and he, if you'd heard him give an English report, you would have thought that he was one of the stupidest people in the class. He actually was the most brilliant, uh, and he, he simply was aware of how much he didn't know, and was very reticent to get up and talk. And uh, whereas a complete ignoramus, and somebody with no, no sense of shame, and no sense of <laughs> modesty, you, know, you, you, can, you can ask many, many of our racial competitors, when you will tell us about nuclear power, and they'll just get yeah. right up and tell you all about nuclear power. So I, I don't know, I, I, I think we, I stand greatly much overarched by people like Jared, who have worked so hard and done so, so much our cause. The, the talk I was going to give, which I've tried to sort of amend and, and think through, uh, 
uh, was being entitled of uh, knowing who we are. And then it actually, since I submitted that, the same to, to, to Jared months ago, it actually came up in another conservative conference. They, they had, I mean, they even more that, knowing who we are. Uh, I did not copy them, and I don't think they copied me. I think it's just something that's commonly said. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about that but I, I incorporated. But I want to talk mostly about the psychological thing, uh, the psychology of, of where we are, who we are, who our enemies are, uh, and what is going on. Uh, I say this to the president, to a friend of mine from New York who is actually uh, a, a certified psychiatrist, and he can talk about this stuff. He has be credentials, but I don't get up and talk about it with no credentials at all. There's a lot. This, being involved in this cause is not some kind of sorrowful existence. There's a lot of pain and there is suffering and, and stress and all of that. But, but we live our lives so much more intensely than other people. And we get a lot more out of our lives, and we have worthier friends than most, most other people. So there's a lot to be said for being uh, in this little movement in, in America and around the world, that we get to live our lives much more fully than other people get to live their lives. And in one way, uh, it, it's the fact that we do have a sense of humor and are not humorless. As my, the, the previous speaker, Paul Fromm, said, our enemies tend to have no sense of humor, uh, and this is true not only in their duties with us, but in their general sour face approach to life. Uh, where we can see the humor in life. And there's so much humor in the modern world. There's so much to laugh about and laugh at. One of my favorite little stories that comes out of my association with this cause concerns a non-white named Louis Bean. Now, uh, Louis Bean is a, an American Indian. Uh, but he agrees with us on a lot of stuff. I, I don't know Louis Bean. He may be a terrible person. I don't think that I've ever met Louis Bean. I may have bumped into him somewhere. But Louis Bean got caught up in, in, in one of the shabbier incidents in the American law community in my lifetime, one that was presided over by Ronald Reagan's Attorney General, Edwin Meade. Uh, and to show you how meaningless the conservative movement of the Republican Party are, uh, I went yesterday to the CPAC conference here, and they have some kind of group that's been formed, Foundation for Liberties or something, and the first name of their board of advisors was former U.S. Attorney General Edward Meese, who's an advisor to this group that is fighting for liberty. 